have a $200 Toyota Camry. It's a 97 that I picked up. Um, drove it home, right front CV joints, about to bang its way through the fucking floorboard. Um, but other than that, and the fact that the back window is busted out, um, you know, the thing's in pretty good shape. Uh, it's kind of dirty, but, you know, whatever. Um, only problem here is I don't feel like paying $300 for a back rear glass, rear window, rear windshield, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, so what I did was I went to the local salvage yard and picked up the glass for $50.00. And, uh, we're going to try this ourselves. So I'll just kind of show you the whole car. It's not too horrible. It's not too great, but, you know, fucking $200. What do you expect? So I did my research and found that you're supposed to use a special windshield polyurethane, all that good stuff. You're supposed to get the reciprocating saw cutter and all that, and you know, you know, waste your money, waste your time. It's a $200 car, I don't really give a shit, so here's what we're gonna do. We got, went down to Home Depot for $6 a tube. We got ourselves some liquid nails, fuse it. Hybrid technology bonds almost everything, anything to everything, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I wouldn't be doing this if this was like, my daily driver or if it was my nice Corvette that I'm trying to keep in good condition, you know, a car that I actually give a shit about. But this is a $200 Camry with 276,000 miles. I don't care. As long as it seals and doesn't leak. I have I have quite a bit of experience in sealing shit up the ghetto way, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this the ghetto way. We're going to try to save this this trim piece on the outside. If we can't, whatever, don't care. Cosmetics aren't really a big deal in this car anyway. So, got our $50, uh, our $50 windshield, our two tubes, ended up being about $15 of bond anything to anything, liquid nails, fuse it. We got, went to Harbor Freight, got a wood chisel set. Um, I heard, I was watching a professional guy and apparently that works pretty well, so that's what he uses. Um, you know, screwdrivers, sorted stuff here, then, uh, got ourselves a box cutter, and, uh, just some regular razor blades with it, too, and, uh, let's see what else we got in here, ourselves a hammer, and this is just a seal puller, as, uh, this is just cheap one from Harbor Freight. I'm an ASE certified uh, master tech, and that's what I do for a living. But I have some stuff at home, too. This was just a cheap one from Harbor Freight. I'm not certified to do glass, but since this is either just going to be a chip, cheap car to keep on hand or a fix and flip, you know, basically, we just got to do the glass and the CV joints and clean it up, and this thing's good to drive. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We don't want to pay $300 for rear glass. We just want this shit to work. And this stuff says, hybrid technology bonds almost everything, all surface, glass, metal, wood. That's what we want to see, glass, right there. That's what we want. Um, you're going to see videos, I'm sure I'm going to get all kinds of hate for doing this. Uh, they're like, oh, you can't do that. Well, we're going to. We're going to do it. And it's going to work. Um, so, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have this job done for probably about $70. If you already got some tools, this was like $8 at Harbor Freight. I didn't have that already. Um, you know, some razor blades, a box cutter, whatever. I already had you know, some of these other tools. So, all right, we're going to get to it. First thing we need to do here, and I, I apologize, this is being shot with a wide angle lens. This is a GoPro. I don't have a lot of fancy camera equipment. Um, first thing we're going to do, this window was already busted out. So, if you. You know, if you're doing a rear windshield, chances are it's already busted out or it's fractured pretty bad. Just go ahead and bust it out the rest of the way, and then that way you can get to it. So you'll see along the inner edge here, that's where your polyurethane sealant for the, the proper stuff is. Um, so you're just going. We're going to want to start cutting around that 
to get all this other shit out. I'm just going to cut all the way around. It's probably going to take some work, but you know what? If you're afraid of a little bit of hard work, you don't need to be here watching this anyway. Same for you. So we're going to get started with that. Be careful not to cut yourself on this glass. Um, I don't feel like paying the money for this special reciprocating saw, so here we are. Probably should have safety glasses for this too. I don't at the moment. Now, if yours doesn't have the window already busted out, there's actual, there's a manual tool that you can, that you can buy. It's like $15 at Harbor Freight. I don't know how good it is that if the window's not already busted out and you don't want to go ahead and do that to make it easier, which if I was in that scenario, I probably wouldn't want to do it either just because, um... You know that cutting knife you go around from the outside here and then you go around from the outside and you stick it in and basically you pull along you can go look it up on Google it's called a windshield removal tool or a cold knife is what they call it in the industry professionals doing this but again like I said I'm a professional for automotive repair not windshield replacement glass replacement so we're just we're just trying to we're just trying to save a little bit of money here oh damn this actually works pretty good this wood chisel it's pretty sharp I'm probably gonna want to go get some safety glasses here in a minute cuz So you know, if you don't have a shop vac, uh, sorry, it's going to be more, more of a pain in the ass. But a shop vac is definitely going to help if you're dealing with broken glass. <laughs> Now, here's something I got for my birthday last year. I haven't had a chance to use yet. USMC K-Bar. Let's see if this shit works. Oh yeah, it's working. The idea here being start it with a utility knife and as you get deeper as you need to go deeper rather pull the deep knife out and go in further
All right, guys, so here's the rest of it out. I may try to pull this weather strip off. I may not. It's going to be pretty fucking messy, so I'm probably just going to leave it. We got it out fully. So here's what we're working with now. We basically got it cut down to here. Um, and I just did this with a chisel. This is like a wood chisel from Harbor Freight. A box cutter. A K-bar knife. And you can use whatever tools suit you best. This is if you're dealing with a busted window already. So if you have a window that's not busted out, um, you may want to, you know, get that the cold knife. There's some other tutorials on YouTube. Get the cold knife. Uh, get a sawzall and sharpen the other side of the blade, the non-sawed side of the blade. Sharpen it down, and basically get in from the inside and cut it all around. A back window is kind of difficult because you're dealing with this ridge right here. So doing it like a front window. Like your front windshield is a little bit difficult because on the front you're not really dealing with a deep ridge like this here or as deep of a ridge so and then basically what we're going to do after that is we're going to cut this down smooth so when they put it on at the factory there's this primer underneath it and as you can see because we're doing this the fucking ghetto method i cut into that primer and uh i even gouged down into the metal a little bit and from the professionals, what I've, I've heard them say is that's not good. You can have corrosion and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And yeah, I get that. But um, as long as you cover all that up with sealant, like you're going to be good. There should be no issue with that. So make sure you just get sealant around that. As long as that's covered up from water and the elements getting on it, like you're going to be fine. So we're using, uh, but you know, we're not having to deal with all that primer and polyurethane stuff anyway. We, we went to Home Depot and got ourselves some fuse it. You know, bond anything to anything. And that's what we're doing here. We're bonding, we're bonding something that shouldn't be bonded to something else. And that's how we're gonna do this because we don't wanna pay the full price. And this is a cheap car. So use the shop vac, got everything cleaned up. Uh, you want to clean up as much as you can right now because this parcel shelf is going to be kind of difficult to get to once the new back glass is on. So next you you got the trim pieces in here and I already took them off so I don't have required two hands. There they are up in the front seat there. All it is is just some, some trim clips that pop in and they slide into place and whatnot, you know. Um, so what you need to do is just get like a, a two, just get like a prong trim tool or a long flathead screwdriver just pop it out pull it off because you're going to need to get to here's our antenna connection and our defroster on both sides now here's our here's our glass over here here's our used glass we got out of the junkyard we're going to put in so these can be kind of tricky to get off so what you're gonna have to do now that sometimes they bend them be careful when you bend them back into place so what you're gonna have to do is there's usually like a clip you're gonna have to get like a small pick or a very small screwdriver very very small screwdriver and release the tabs it's gonna be kind of hard to show you on camera how to do it but you know they just cut the wires on this at the junkyard so I gotta do it so just be careful because you don't want to break these off here. If you do break these off, you know, your antenna's not going to work or your rear defroster's not going to work. And it's basically, it's like some kind of special solder. And you can go to O'Reilly's or your parts store or whatever and get the, get the proper stuff to, to uh, if you bust these off, you know, to solder them back on. It's like a specific glue or a special, I don't think it's really a solder, it's like a specific glue. You can go get the glue to solder those back on, but just be note, be careful of these. And you're, that's why you want to take the trim panels off on the other side, is because uh, you need to be able to access that to reconnect these once you get the new glass sealed on there and whatnot. So what we're gonna do now 
is we're going to cut this down, you know, as low as we can get it. You know, get like a nice smooth even surface here. So when we slap the new glass on, um, you know, we won't. We're going to try to eliminate any ridges or whatever so it'll go on evenly and seal up nicely. So that's what we're going to do now. Alright, so day two. And sorry, we're operating in low light conditions. The day's coming to an end here. Basically, I uh, that weather strip that had all the old glass on it that I was cutting out, it took a while, but I was able to cut all the shit out of it and get all the old glass and polyurethane out and we're actually going to reuse that so I uh, didn't really feel like showing that it's kind of boring so, you know you know it's just cleaning it up basically what I did here was I uh, cut all the old glue off the surfaces there cleaned it with alcohol and uh, did the same thing here all the way around disconnected our connectors we got our trim panels out on the inside so basically we're ready, we're ready to go with this now so what I'm gonna do now this is specific for you know a Toyota Camry a 97 Toyota Camry uh, whatever weather stripping you have if you're reusing it try to clean it off as best you can and if you're doing this the super ghetto method like we are you're gonna want to squirt some around the very outside of the glass there and then on the very outside of the metal so that you know you've got good sealant contact there's you know there's gonna be nothing worse than you go through all this trouble and you don't get contact on the right areas and you have a spot that misses and you have a water leak then you gotta cut the shit back out and do it over again so Make sure you put a good enough amount of sealant here. So I'm going to do one last pass of alcohol around both sides. Oh, one more thing to note. There are tabs here that kind of line it up. So if you have alignment tabs on yours, make sure you line them up. Um, and then you're going to want to do masking tape over it. So I'm going to do one more pass with the alcohol. Then we're going to squirt the sealant and we're going to slap the windshield on. Alright, so here we are about a week later after the I put the windshield on, rear glass on. Um, 
just gonna kind of sum it up here because the footage wasn't very good from when I was actually putting it on inside the barn I don't know if you could actually hear it um, but anyway basically um, you know I got this uh, this weather strip here I busted out the old glass which was kind of a chore but I got it on and I got it you know I had to go around with a pair of pliers and kind of crimp it down because it's like uh, rubber um, it's basically it's got a metal frame underneath there that can bend and can pinch and grab onto the window better so when I pulled it off it wasn't all that great uh, so I had to go around with pliers and pinch it all back down and then it popped on there real good so basically what I did was and I already got all the trim back on and everything um, but if you can see up under here where the sealant line is it's sealed up really well uh, I leak checked it I didn't have any leaks um, and basically after it uh, after it cured I just there were there's one one connector right up here for the an antenna which is this up here and then I had a connector down here and a connector down here for the defrost I just clipped them on now be careful with those because if you bust it off the glass then your defroster is not going to work you have to try solder it back on so just be careful with that um, and so basically this weather strip was really thick so oops. This weather strip was really thick and it was kind of unlike doing a front windshield in that it kind of created a little bit of a gap between the glass and the actual pinch weld on the vehicle. So what I did was I, I measured the spout on the silicone, uh, silicone tube and I cut it to a half inch. And then I did along the inside edge of the pinch weld, I did a half inch bead all the way around. And then I went onto the glass where the old sealant line was, which was basically where the glass met the weather strip on the inside, and I put another half inch bead there. And now you can go to Harbor Freight and get the suction cups that you know will help you move the windshield easier, but I figured since we had this weather strip that would be easy enough to grab it and slap it on, and it was. It wasn't an issue doing it that way. So basically just um, one thing to note is if you're doing front glass or a rear glass that has does not have a weather strip here, meaning there's going to be no gap, that windshield is going to smack straight onto the pinch weld, you're probably going to want to do just one half inch bead. And I would recommend doing that around the old sealant line close to the inside of the pinch weld and then slap your glass on. But if you have a thick weather strip here that creates a bit of a gap like this car does, uh, you're going to want to put a half inch bead on the pinch weld on the vehicle and then a half inch bead on the glass. That way it'll they'll meet together and it'll seal up nice and good. Don't smear it around, just do a nice thick half inch bead. Uh, and when you if you have to stop and then go back around, uh, make sure make sure those two those two sections connect really well. Make sure you kind of overlap one way and then overlap back the other way so that there's not like a, a gap right there. So when you put put the glass on, you're gonna have an air gap and it's gonna leak. I already I already leak checked this one. I just sprayed it down with a garden hose and didn't have any leaks, so I put it all back together. But like you can see up here, and actually it looks like this one does have a weather strip. But you know, basically just kind of kind of go by that if you're dealing with a weather strip, and if you're not gonna be dealing with a weather strip. And what you do want to do is when you put the glass on some some windows are going to have locator tabs like this one did up here however when they took the junkyard took this out of the old vehicle they kind of broke the guide pins a little bit the the tab was there but the actual pins that hook in there are these metal hooks that uh, on the vehicle where it hooks into it those were broken off so it kind of worked but i did have to put masking tape i did like four strips of masking tape up here that's basically just to keep it from sliding down and you're going to see kind of over here, uh, it did slide down a little bit and then I had to push it back up. So there's a little bit of a sealant right there. So that, and that, so I, I got a little bit, a little bit much over here. Um, but that may have been because I was slide, I had to slide the glass back up and then had to masking tape it. So, uh, make sure you do that. And, uh, also if you have to masking tape 
uh, a bag in place because you have a window busted out don't use cheap masking tape like I did spend the money get the just spend the money and get the good stuff because I had uh, I wasn't able to take care of the glass right when I bought this car so I had to make sure that it wasn't going to get completely soaked um, and I used cheap masking tape from the dollar store I think it can come off I think I'll be able to get it off definitely do not use duct tape duct tape will never come off um, this stuff will probably come off but just don't use cheap masking tape spend the money on the good stuff it's it's worth it and uh, you know that, that that pretty much sums it up for what I had to do for the rear glass um, and I again I did use the uh, what was it liquid nails fuse it f-u-z-e-i-t um, because it specified glass and metal sealing properties so um, I've seen videos where people have done this themselves and they've gone around and they've just done like regular silicone from Home Depot and uh, you know I'm sure that'll work but you want to you want to get the best seal possible and it, it, you know you can find polyurethane sealant at Home Depot too that's going to be similar to the actual proper glass sealant um, again it's not the proper stuff but you could probably use that too but uh, this stuff was gray. The actual polyurethane stuff is going to be black, so you'll just have to make your judgment call there. If if you get a little bit of sealant that uh, you know spooges out, um, you may you may not want that to be gray. So just make that judgment call yourself. But I used the liquid nails fuse it because it specified metal and glass bonding properties. Um, so yeah I mean it, it works great it bonded well it's it's solid it's in place it's in there it's not going anywhere and, and there's no leaks so it was gonna cost three hundred dollars for a glass company to come out and do it and I did this for sixty five dollars so that was just a hair over a fifth of the cost which is well worth it because I only paid two hundred dollars for this car and I didn't want to put three hundred into it for just a piece of glass so that was well worth it. You know, I, I wouldn't do this on a vehicle that I really care about. Like I have an older Corvette that I like to keep really nice. Um, I wouldn't do it on that. I would pay the money. Or if you've got a newer vehicle that's worth, you know, I don't know, 10000 dollars whatever, you may want to actually just pay the money and have it done properly. But if you got a beater car, something that's old, or you don't really care, this method will work. Um, and it, it will save you a lot of money. But I will, I will note though that if you have a weather strip like this on the outside of your glass, um, it, it's going to take you some time. Put some gloves on, and it's going to take some time with a box cutter to cut that sealant out and bust that bust the glass out because it's those glass chunks are going to be they're going to be in there. They're going to be in there pretty good, and that's if you have a busted window. If you're just taking the window out, it may be easier to just cut the weather strip out. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to keep it updated. Next thing I got to do with this car is the CV axles. Um, I already, I already replaced some bulbs on the cluster and I started peeling this, uh, started peeling this crappy wood trim. I hate this cheap wood trim. I mean, the interior of this car is cheap enough already, but they had, somebody had to go and make it worse with this cheap wood trim. I, I hate this stuff. So I peeled it off and I think it looks much better. It looks a lot more normal. So I will keep you updated, and if you have any questions, just ask in the comments. I will be happy to answer it. So hopefully if you're in this situation, this can save you some money.